If I had to choose a single word to encapsulate the essence of SpaceX, flexibility would undoubtedly be the perfect choice. The SpaceX team spent years building the launch site for Starship's first orbital flight. But right after that unfortunate explosion in April, the company immediately embarked on renovations and changes for everything at Starbase for their second Starship launch. Find out everything about this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First, it's clear that the launch mount necessitates the biggest overhaul. Before SpaceX can try again to send its massive Starship rocket into orbit, the company needs to repair and renovate its badly damaged launch site in South Texas. It's still not clear whether the design changes that SpaceX is doing will be sufficient. That launch attempt in April destroyed the structure below the launch pad, sending chunks of sand, concrete, and steel thousands of feet into the sky and setting fire to a nearby park. To ensure the following flights don't fling debris everywhere, the company's adding a new feature, a pair of massive steel plates with pressurized water to help dampen the effects of as many as 33 Raptor engines igniting during takeoff. This will consist of two steel plates, the top one full of holes that will allow cold water to shoot out during the launch. The idea is that the steel will be able to withstand the intense forces and energy better than concrete, while the pressurized water will help additionally dampen the impact. Musk even likened it to a massive, super strong steel shower head pointing up. Foundation work appears to be complete. SpaceX is now said to be installing the final pipelines of the water deluge system. Late last weekend, Marvin lifted a large elbow piece of deluge-related pike over behind the water tanks, but it was later lifted back out. This is likely for measurements for final grinding and cutting for an exact fit. In order to maintain the water pressure, they may use nitrogen, which means consuming additional gas to handle each launch. In fact, nitrogen is used to clean and initiate the cooling of pipes. When combined with water, it's also used for the fire suppression system present on the platform on which Super Heavy stands. Next, SpaceX is also actively expanding its tank farm. The team just installed two more giant tanks, as explained in the previous episode. Honestly, the tank farm will be an easier part to handle than the launch pad. SpaceX will replace these tanks with horizontal hot dog shaped tanks that will be better protected from launch pad debris. The vertical tanks intended to store liquid methane were replaced last year by horizontal tanks better suited to this purpose. Given the logistical nightmare of arranging something like 100 plus tanker trucks for each tank farm refill, a process that could easily take a week or more on its own, it should come as no surprise that SpaceX is also building a dedicated liquid oxygen and nitrogen plant adjacent to its Starbase factory. On top of liquid natural gas or LNG refinery and tenuous plans to potentially tap local natural gas wells, SpaceX is clearly well aware of the logistical challenges of regular Starship launches. While there are no clear signs of the inevitable permitting and environmental reviews it'll require, it's likely that SpaceX is going to eventually create a brief above or below ground cryogenic pipeline connecting its propellant factory to Starbase's orbital launch sites. If or when implemented, that would allow SpaceX to resupply its two planned orbital tank farms with minimal effort or human intervention beyond the process of producing the propellant. Not just the launch site either. If you get a chance to go to Starbase now, you'll see SpaceX is completely revamping their Starship assembly site. This week, the Mega Bay 2 section was off the floor. Back in more than three years ago, in late 2019, SpaceX followed in the footsteps of Tesla and began constructing a surprisingly advanced factory out of a series of tents. Instead of Model 3s, though, SpaceX would be building and assembling sections of the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. Measuring approximately 120 meters tall, 9 meters wide, 5,000 tons fully fueled, and capable of producing 7,500 tons of thrust at liftoff, Starship is a fully reusable rocket that aims to perfect what SpaceX has already achieved with partially refuelable Falcon 9s and heavies. Nevertheless, Starship's manufacturing process represents a substantial departure from the method SpaceX uses to build Falcon rockets. Instead of heavily leaning on horizontal integration, meaning that the rockets are primarily assembled in a horizontal orientation, Starship and its Super Heavy booster are almost exclusively assembled vertically. Excluding the machining of major load-bearing structures, Starship manufacturing generally begins with giant rolls of thin 3-4mm stainless steel. SpaceX uses a custom tool to unspool the sheet metal, cuts off a roughly 28 meter long strip, and then welds the end of that strip together to produce a cylindrical barrel. Repeat that process 57 times and you end up with enough rings to assemble a full super heavy booster in most of a Starship. 
However, using increasingly custom tools, SpaceX first stacks and welds those individual rings together to form sections of two, three, four, or five. Each section is then prepared for its specific role with a range of cutouts, plumbing, reinforcements, vertical stringers or circumferential stiffeners, thrust structures, the plates that the Raptor engines attach to, and other add-ons. Most importantly, certain stacks of rings are mated with large steel domes welded together out of prefabricated steel plates to form forward, common, and aft dome sections. For Starship, SpaceX also assembles the ship's conical nose section in a similar manner. Virtually all ring, dome, and nose assembly work is conducted in one of three massive tents, each about 114 by 35 meters, that form the backbone of Starbase's Starship factory. Finally, SpaceX has built a series of massive open-air bays where, once fully outfitted, each ship and booster section is stacked in a specific order and welded together to complete the basic structures of Starship and Super Heavy. As SpaceX slowly but surely treks toward the end of approximately two years almost exclusively dedicated to building ever-changing prototypes, it's been clear for a while that the company would need to drastically expand its production facilities to produce the dozens of Starships and boosters CEO Elon Musk has been publicly dreaming of. Even at lower volumes, those existing facilities, while great for producing a dozen or more prototypes a year, would still become a choke point for the near-term production of a small fleet of operational Starships and Super Heavies. As a result, SpaceX is building another huge bay. Finally, an impressive upgrade has been made to the next version of the Raptor, Raptor 3. Last month, Elon unveiled that SpaceX Raptor V3 engine was able to achieve 350 bar chamber pressure and 269 tons of thrust. This number reached 18% more thrust than a Raptor 2. Remember the Raptor 2 had even 25% more thrust than Raptor 1 and it was 20% lighter. SpaceX has been doing this to reduce unneeded parts and reduce the weight of the Raptor engines. SpaceX will remove gimballing on the outer engines and remove the rocket shroud where possible as well. It's likely that besides increasing thrust, that SpaceX continue to reduce the weight by another 200 kilograms. This would mean reducing the weight of the rocket by 8 tons for the 40 engines in the first and second stages of the Super Heavy Starship. Weight reduction of the entire rocket and improved electronics and other systems will improve the cost and overall performance of future SpaceX Starship rockets. Besides, in the realm of rocket science, where every pound of thrust matters, the chamber pressure is the basis for creating the powerful thrusts of the engine. Raptor 3 chamber wall might have had the highest heat flux of anything ever made, Musk tweeted. As the pressure within the combustion chamber rises, the propellants experience a more forceful expulsion, resulting in a greater velocity as they're expelled through the engine's nozzle. According to Newton's third law of motion, this forceful expulsion creates an equal and opposite reaction, providing the necessary thrust to propel the rocket forward. This enhanced thrust enables rockets to carry heavier payloads, achieve higher velocities, and undertake more ambitious space missions. A higher chamber pressure leads to a greater thrust output, enabling a higher thrust-to-weight ratio. This ratio is crucial as it signifies the amount of force the engine can produce in relation to its own weight. A higher thrust-to-rate ratio empowers the rocket to carry heavier payloads or achieve enhanced acceleration, thereby increasing the range of missions it can undertake. The importance of chamber pressure extends to the design flexibility of rocket engines. Higher pressures offer engineers the ability to achieve desired performance characteristics while maintaining compact and lightweight engine designs. This flexibility is crucial in enabling the development of advanced launch vehicles that are capable of fulfilling various mission requirements, including crewed missions, deep space exploration, and satellite deployments. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.